Hello Jovial Campers! Today we're going to be doing a video that has been requested uh, an awful lot by our viewers. Uh, it will be a sort of double review. We'll be uh, addressing the subject of the mirrorless camera and more to the point uh, we'll do a specific review of the Sony Alpha 6000. Studio now, where we can give you the, uh, the proper reviews of the uh, Sony Alpha 6000. And I'm going to start the ball rolling with uh, a topic that I've only just really fully understood myself, which is what is a mirrorless camera? Now it sounds quite obvious, and uh, to a point it is. A mirrorless camera, of course, does not have a mirror. But it was only when I asked Colin, pro, who will actually explain what a mirrorless camera is. And uh, yes, it doesn't contain a mirror, but why do we even need a mirror? Said I to him. And uh, the mirror, it turns out, is only there to provide you with a view through your viewfinder. So one of the big advantages that the Sony Alpha 6000 has, along with all the new digital uh, mirrorless cameras, is that it produces a digital uh, image through the viewfinder. Uh, now, uh, what's happened in the last possibly five, six years with digital technology, particularly with LCD technology, is that it's come on now to the extent that it's good enough now that the live view through your viewfinder, as a result of being mirrorless, is now good enough that uh, it's a genuine option to give you good enough clarity, contrast, depth of colour through the viewfinder that the mirror is becoming less and less an advantage. That's point A. Uh, about what a mirrorless camera is. Point B is far, far more obvious. By removing that mirror uh, um, mechanic and everything that has to go with it, you go from this to this. Okay, this is a this is a high level professional end DSLR, and a lot of that at the bottom there you probably able to see is 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 a battery pack because Colin uses it professionally when he needs a lot of shots. But you can see. This is without a lens. You can see the weight and size saving that you're gaining immediately from removing the mirror mechanism from the DSLR. This well, is they can't see the weight. No, see this, the weight. this is 250 <laughs> grams without a lens. 250 grams. I mean, it's, it's not... And this, I would probably argue, without the battery, is, is over a kilo. Yeah, and there's no battery in that yet, and no lens and on that. And there's no lens on that. So we're, and we're, we'll show you what happens when the lenses go on. Now, my Alpha 6000 at the moment does have its lens on. It has the lens on that I've been using for the last uh, three outings that mm -hmm. we've been on. Which is, it's just the kit lens. It's the 1650-3556. It's a good lens. It works really, really well. Uh, we can talk more about the lens features later. But to start the review of the Sony Alpha 6000, and uh, obviously we are being specific with this camera. Now, I mean, there are probably dozens on the market now of mirrorless uh, digital DSLR equivalent cameras that are as good if not far better. In fact, Sony themselves have released several since we bought these that are vastly superior to this camera. This is basically a review of, of a camera that we use when we go on our camping, wild camping trips because it does everything that we want so, so well in a very, very compact package. That is the, the, the fundamental difference between a, a mirrorless and a DSLR camera is the biggest advantage is you are saving on size and you are saving on weight. And um, if you look at some of our other videos when we take the shot, bright sunlight, that's a camera a printer, just, printer just randomly decided to do something you know, as, as you do. Thank you Mr Printer. But uh, if you looked at our other videos when, we, when, when we've been using these, uh, one of the things that I found so, so useful about not having the mirror and having the screen and the live view viewfinder is when you take the shot in bright sunlight, I don't care how good your DSLR is, you can't see the viewfinder. You see your shot and you go, 
is it is it good? Is it good? Can't see is it you good? Do this. Yeah. But you can immediately take the viewfinder to your eye, and you'll see your shot. And and I, it's just one of those little things that's made a very big difference to the way we've been taking photographs. Even with the first two or three videos that you'll see on our site, we're taking with DSLRs, and it's hit miss. It's only your knowledge of the camera that basically allowed us to get some of the shots we did because you can't see them in really bright daylight. It's very very difficult to see them. Secondly, of course, when you're wild camping, you're carrying everything on your back and uh, you need to be able to get to your camera. Now, we tried and failed and won and had laughs along yeah. the way at trying to get cameras out quickly. And sometimes, if you take the photography side of things seriously when you're going camping, uh, there are superb shot opportunities with lighting, cloud movement, winds and everything like that, where you will only get maybe four or five seconds. Yeah. To get a shot, and I mean, I, I personally didn't have the ability to latch on cameras onto my belt or my bag or anything like that. I needed to get to a camera quick, and with the DSLR, it was it was impossible. Impossible. Yeah. You have to take your whole pack off. You have to get out, and a lot of the time, by that point, you've missed a specific shot, or you need to accept that you're taking the camera off and you're going to stop for five minutes, ten and minutes. I also had. The massive DSLR you saw in one of the, I think, the Angle Tarn video. Yeah. Without this battery pack on, it was the 50D I was using, great camera, and it was attached to my belt there. And it was just, it was massive, absolutely massive, just ridiculous size to be just hanging off your belt. Sorry. Carry yeah. On. No, absolutely. So, and it was that. I think it was after that trip that we went out. I said to Colin on the way home in the car, do you know what? On the next trip, I'm going to bring my Alpha 6000 just to see how well it does. Now, I mean, don't get me wrong. Brilliant. Uh, this isn't even. This is even scripted. Planned. It's not even scripted. Uh, it, it, it will be. Yeah. It's yes, the wife. Of course. Hello. Yeah. 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 All right, babe. Uh, what am I doing? Um, I'm currently in the middle of a video review of the Sony Alpha Six Thousand. Okay. <laughs> oh. Can I can I ring you later, hon? Can you be in the video? Not not right now, but no. <laughs> oh, that, 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 but honestly, you couldn't have, even if we'd scripted this, you couldn't have rung them at a better time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see what a lovely camera it is. Alright. Thanks for that, babe. I'll speak to you later. Yeah. <laughs> I'll call you soon. Bye. Bye. Totally should bring a set. Brilliant. She will ring during that review. <laughs> Do you even have to script the comedy? So, anyway. <laughs> Back into it. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so where was it? Yeah, so it was on the way home that I said I was going to take up the Sony Alpha 6000 just to see how, how well it does. And like I said, yeah, there are, there are things that are different between this and the Pro DSLR. You're always going to have a sort of compromise. Now, I'm not sure before I say this, but I'm not sure if you can get a full frame in the Alpha 6000, certainly, it's not a full frame sensor. It's the Sony it's A7R2 and A7R. It's the much, full it's frame. the higher end, yeah. it's the higher end versions of these, which do incidentally start to get expensive before you're going to get full frame. This is a crop sensor, an APS-C format as it's called, uh, camera format. And, uh, and despite its ISO range of 100 to 25,600 on the stats, it's usable probably up to 16, maybe uh, uh, 32 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. for our work. But again, if you've watched our videos, if you'd like to watch our videos on, on basic landscape photography, the ISO range is, is so negligible. Mm -hmm. You'll almost always photograph at relatively low ISOs. Uh, the noise handling is not going to be as good as a DSLR. The battery life is not going to be as good as a DSLR. However, this will still do. Sony claim, I think it's uh, what three hundred ten shots. We've got the three, spec three, we've, got, we've, got, Sony. we've got all the information. We'll put that up at the end of the video. But it's supposed to do about three hundred plus uh, shots. Which, uh, and on all our trips, I've never even come close to using half the battery. Now, our battery life is obviously subject to temperature and everything like that. If it's cold, it will go down quick and everything like that. But nevertheless, I've never run out of battery power. So you won't get the battery life that you will on a big DSLR. You're not going to get the noise handling you're getting a big DLSR, uh, DSLR. Sorry. It's easy to say. It is. Yeah. And uh, lenses. 
Uh, Sony are getting better and better and better and better. And there's more and more and more and more lenses coming out. But at the moment, as at this time of video, uh, there's not the range of lenses that you have for the for your Canons, your Nikons, Fujis, that type of thing. However, again, for what we do, there's more than enough. There is more than enough lenses. And uh, of course the body is, is small. So if, if you do get a very, very nice lens, and there are gorgeous lenses made for Sony, particularly on the Carl Zeiss end of the range, that are very expensive. But you'll end up with a lens that is, is here. And um, the, the whole balance of the camera goes to, to pop, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a weird experience using a, a mirrorless camera with a lens that's three times the length of the body and the whole thing just tips and tripod use and everything like that can, can become more of an issue than a nice heavy DSLR that's more, more stable in the hand. We are focusing purely on reviewing this camera for what we use it for. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, Colin will, will, will talk about the actual technical information that, that might be of use to you or interesting to you because he, that's, that's definitely his side of things. And, and, but it is interesting to mention at this point that I, I'm not a pro. I do this for fun, it's a hobby of mine, but you've already seen the differences between mine and, and Colin's shots and, and I'd like to think that mine are comparable insofar as, you know, even as, a, as an amateur, an enthusiastic amateur perhaps, it will produce shots comparable to a DSLR for landscape. This is not a review saying this will do amazing macro photography or amazing wedding photography. I can't talk about that. We are reviewing this purely for what we do while camping. Horrible weathers, you know, subject to the, the worst that the elements can give you, dropped packs, everything like that. This has not yet failed us. So that is fundamentally what a mirrorless camera is. Uh, the advantages, disadvantages from a purely ergonomic point of view. And then I'll hand over to my uh, partner in crime. He will now run you through the actual technical specification of what this particular camera will do, uh, certainly for the landscape photographer side of things. So um, I'm going to now talk about some of the detailed specs of the camera, um, some of the things that I've noted throughout using the camera in its time. Now I'm used to using the you know, professional quality DSLRs, I know this camera back to front, I have to because it's my job, um, but obviously I don't want to take that out of the fells, like Steve mentioned, it's really heavy, it's really bulky. It's, it's, uh, it's not very good for walking around and I already take enough water with me uh, for the weight, uh, probably about 10 kilos of water. Down to, I drink nine, it all. Down down to nine. nine at least, yeah. I drink it all. Um, now, there's a couple of things that I would like to do before I get the review uh, going, which is maybe have the camera in my hand, uh, which is just up there on charge. Mm. I need that for the flippy out the screen a bit, so we'll start that again. <laughs> <laughs> That went wrong. This camera that's not in my hand right now. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, three, two, one. Right then, so I'm going to talk about some of the technical specs of this camera. I'm not going to go into too much detail because this, again, is a review for people who are going to use this, not for people who are bothered about it's a certain size difference and it's got certain megapixels. And I'm not going to go into too much detail because you want to know whether I don't know what that voice was, but I'll use it again. I quite like that voice. Work with it. I'll work with it. Yeah, yeah. I styled it out. Um, I'm gonna. You guys are gonna be using this camera to take photographs of things you want to take photographs of. You want it to. You want to know that it's easy to use and can reproduce some amazing photographs. You know. So the technical specs I'm gonna talk about are important, and you do need to know about them because some of the other cameras, like the Canon EOS M, uh, which is also a nice mirrorless camera, doesn't compare. Um, with the differences in the quality of the lenses and, and especially the kit lens that comes with it because the majority of you guys are going to buy this camera and, and keep the kit lens which is brilliant isn't it? It's it great, works. It's great for what it else. does. Um, you can see from our pictures using these kit lenses they produce some superb shots. So uh, one of the first things we're going to talk about and the thing that we use quite a lot is the, uh, the flippy out screen. Uh, it's, it's brilliant. You know, when you're, when you're wanting to go down low um, to ground level and you don't want to get wet, it might be a bit soggy, you can flip down the screen so it's like that, pointing up towards you, you can get that down as low as you like and still see the screen, which is amazing, I really like that. You can't outfit. do that with a DSLR. You can't. Can't do it. There are, um, let's have a look, there's, uh, <laughs> there's another DSLR here, uh, Canon 60D, which has a flippy out your screen, of course it does, it's brilliant, but you're straight back into the it's Size really heavy and bulky, yeah. and size sometimes isn't an issue, obviously, uh, but in this case it is. So, yes, it's got a flippy out screen, yes, it's a DSLR, but it's really heavy. So, 
win. So, uh, after the flipping out screen, which is a three inch diagonal screen, uh, LED, which is lovely, yeah, you still get the shine back from the sun, like Steve says, but you can just look through the viewfinder and the amount of times we've done that in our videos and it looks a bit weird because we just still go, oh, that's basically amazing. All, basically every shot we take. Yeah, pretty much. You look at check this the, out. Check the viewfinder. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, so we do that. Uh, quickly skirt over the megapixels. It's 24.3 megapixels, but one thing you shouldn't really hang yourself upon is megapixels because I know some people who have taken amazing National Geographic shots at six megapixels, they have been full landscape shots. Now, megapixels, it's not a massive thing to worry about, especially at the levels that, that possibly you guys are going to be working at, especially at some of the levels that we work at. Um, my wedding photography, I don't use full 28 megapixels on my camera. What, what's the point? It just gives me massive file sizes. Now, the reason why, and you're probably asking now, well, why not use the full megapixels? You get a better quality image. You don't. You get a great image from your lens and your sensor. Now, all megapixels does is give you the ability to blow that image up. Now, six megapixels will give you a nice one meter by one meter, if you like, image, which would be perfect for your wall. Nice and clear, nice and sharp. If you want to use, I know there's a new Canon. Uh, 50, 50 well, megapixel. Yeah, yeah, the 50 megapixel Canon that's just come out, which is great for, for your, your corporate shooters that are taking pictures are going to get blown up and, and printed onto the side of a skyscraper, that's when your megapixels come into it because then obviously the dot density in the megapixels has to stretch out to that size. You're never going to print it that big. You're going to print it maximum, I don't know, 20 inch by 16 inch, something like that, which is a nice decent size. It'll come out lovely in, in, that, um, in that aspect. So don't, don't worry yourself too or much about it. Or if you need to crop. That's yeah. another thing. Yeah. If you're going to crop right into yeah. the head of a bird from a mile away, yeah. then your megapixel will come in. We're taking vistas. Vistas, wide shots. Um, and, and if you do want to crop into a bird uh, and you want to crop that out, then, then use a different camera system <laughs> or a different lens. You know, this isn't for, it, it's not jack of all trades, master of none. It does what we want it to do perfectly, which is wide shots. And sometimes we'll do stitches and sometimes we'll zoom in and get a bit of okay. Bokeh, bokeh, oh, I love a bit of bokeh, which is, and bokeh again, just for you guys, if you don't understand that, is just the out of focus background, so you get something in focus at the back, and then it's the blurred bit at the back, and that's bokeh, B-O-K-E-H, it's spelt, um, I'll put that up on the, uh, on the screen now, now, it takes um, JPEG images, so you can just take them straight out, and put them on your computer, which is fine, but uh, like both me and Steve like to take images in RAW. We talked about RAW in our landscape photography tutorial in one of our videos previously. I'll quickly skirt over that now in the sense that it just gives you more information, more to play with when it comes to editing. If you're keen on doing lots of edits and making your sky look really crisp and the clouds come out and, and the ground look really you know, saturated and things like that, JPEG will be all right, but RAW gives you all that information. It's a bigger file size, but having that option with this camera is superb. Um, you can also shoot RAW and JPEG at the same time. So when you take one photograph, it will save an image as RAW and it will save an image as JPEG, or you can have one or the other. We generally just shoot in RAW, uh, but for the beginners out there, they can pop it straight into auto, JPEG, shoot away and get some really, really nice results. Worth mentioning at that point, actually, Sony use their own in-house algorithms for working out their RAW, they call it Sony RAW. Mm. It's not a common RAW file and until recently uh, Adobe, which I think is fair to say is the most common mm. editing software, Photoshop, Lightroom, mm -hmm. couldn't read uh, Sony RAW. That has been updated, yeah. ironic Colin runs it, it now works flawlessly, it will import Sony RAW files, uh, same as Nikon, Canon, uh, Pentax and uh, the other ones. The other ones. Yeah. Names, uh, uh, eluded me now. <laughs> big, big deal. Big deal. Certainly if you bring in a lot of files, it was incredibly annoying with these. I had to convert every single raw file first into a format that Lightroom would read and then bring them into Lightroom. All gone. It's all been updated and, uh, and Adobe are getting really good at this now. They're on top of this with all the new cameras that are coming out. So the standard Sony raw file, ARW I believe. ARW, it is. yeah. Is yeah. now perfectly readable, certainly by the Photoshop suite, which is the only one I use, so I can't talk for the others, but 
another big mention with raw files is they are all different. Yeah. JPEG standardized. JPEG yeah. is JPEG. Yeah. It raw anything. Brilliant. But make sure if you're going to go to this that you don't have a 2005 version of a purchased version of Lightroom. It won't read it. Yeah, you'll have to download um, from the Adobe website called the, it's called the Adobe DNG Converter, which it just means you just have to drag them off your SD card onto your computer, load them into the DNG Converter, convert them into RAW, and then load them into your editing software, your Adobe editing software. The reason Adobe are, are on this now is because mirrorless is becoming very, very popular. Um, I quickly mentioned the Sony A7R and the A7R2, um, which is um, a wedding photographer's favourite at the moment. They're stupendously expensive, especially the A7R2, and really not ideal for walking around on the fells. Um, so it's a, it's a completely different thing. Um, now, to move on to, there are, there are obviously some negatives involved uh, in this, no pun intended. Negatives, digital. brilliant. Oh. On it, on it today. On it. Uh, there are some negatives, and the the negligible really negatives for 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 what you will use them for. And certainly, if you use Lightroom or ma the majority of even free downloadable editing editing software, will get rid of the negatives involved in the capturing of some of these images. So the first one is the um, the distortion on the. Uh, lens itself. When you zoom right out to 16 millimeters, you'll kit notice lens. on the kit lens, kit lens, kit lens. Sorry, the one that comes with the camera. When you zoom right out to 16 millimeters, you'll notice some dark edges, and that's called vignetting. Some people add vignetting. Uh, however, it's quite strong. It's quite heavy on this, and it's not very nice. So, one click of a button in in Lightroom, certainly not Lightroom six, and or. Uh, the raw settings in uh, Photoshop CS6 or even um, uh, what's the light version uh, CC is it uh, Photoshop CC that would that's still it? an element yeah. yeah that still has the the ability to get rid of that with with literally one click of a button uh, but that's something to mention if you're working in JPEG it won't go away it's there forever if you're in raw you can get rid of it because as we mentioned before all the information is still there you get um, also something which is called chromatic aberration. Without going into too much detail, it's it's like a fringing, like a ready break effect uh, around high highlights of things. So if you imagine the top half of a fell, so if you've got a bright sky behind and then the darker fell, you'll see like a purple fringing happening on the top. Again, you can get rid of that in, in editing, but if you take it in JPEG and you're doing a very simple uh, point and shoot, then you can't get rid of that. So bear that in mind when you are shooting, not to shoot at heavy contrast uh, zones. Um, that, apart from the slow startup time as well, um, Sony, when, when we got these cameras, we both bought them at separate times, but we've had the same issues. Um, Sony brought out an update uh, probably about six, eight months ago, something like that, and we both updated our cameras. And the first time we updated them, we switched them on, bang, straight on. Now, it, it, there's a bit of a delay, it kind of, well, it's on. Oh, does it quite It's mainly with the off. It's mainly it's with the mainly off. With it. You turn it off, nothing will happen. And then it now it does it perfectly, of course, but often course, you'll yeah. find you turn it off, it'll sit there for 10 seconds, then it'll actually take a shot. It doesn't take a shot, but it, it actually releases. Yeah, it's done it perfect twice now. It, it will do it. But yeah, yeah, a, yeah and that, that can be a bit annoying if you wanted to get that quick shot. You might have your camera there because it's light and easy accessible, but then you turn it on, you're like, Nothing come happens. on, come Nothing on, happens. come on. Ah, that's gone, that, uh, yeah. that unicorn has gone. Um, so yeah, the chromatic aberration and lens distortion, two very, very minor things. Things that, that both Steve and I will notice, because obviously me being a professional, I like to make sure it's right, and Steve notices it because he's a very, very keen amateur, you know, he's very, very good at what he does, in my opinion, anyway. Um, so that covers quite a lot of the, the technical side of things. There's just so many more things, and we'll, we'll, we'll go quickly through some menus in the next part of the video um, after me and Steve have had just a quick discussion about why we use them. Uh, and one last thing, um, now obviously you've probably seen me out in the fells using other camera lenses, um, this 17 to 40 Canon lens, um, Sony, Canon, Sony, Canon, Sony. That's not going to work. Uh, it don't fit and I really like this lens, so I bought this. Again we'll do a quick close up of this. Um, it's the Comlight, Comlight adapter. We've talked about this again while we've been on the Fells, but for those that have not seen the Fell videos, um, this basically converts from the NEX mount, which is e -mount, yeah. an E-mount just there, converts that into a 
cannon mount, which then means that I can pop on my favourite lens, and there we go. And there we go. Again, straight away what I mentioned, look at how ridiculous Massive. that now becomes. Do you want to see ridiculous? Do you want to see ridiculous? Okay, so what I've... <laughs> here's what I prepared earlier. This, my friends, is stupendously ridiculous. Almost, it's almost like cartoon comedy it's ridiculous. Is. Now, it still works. It works absolutely fine. However, do you know how you get uh, a small camera for its ease of use and, you know, its lightweight ability to carry around the fells? Um, hmm. <laughs> 7200 2.8. Yeah, 7200 2.8. Alright, there's your tripod mount. Yeah. Even then, I think it would probably be pulling the tripod over that didn't have a leg out here. <laughs> it would struggle with the balance. It's so unbalanced, it's unbelievable. I mean, you're never going to use this. You're not. But I mean, we're reviewing for landscape. But yeah. wedding photographers and things that are moving towards this mirrorless system, that's a very big consideration. I mean, <laughs> handheld, these things are... That's borderline on the absolute max. Yeah. Yeah, and one, one thing to mention, I mean, this is the Comlight adapter, the efx NEX Comlight, Comlight adapter. Now, you can get the Metabones adapter, uh, which is slightly faster. And what, what I mean by slightly faster is you can switch the camera on, it uses autofocus, which is fine, which is perfect. Uh, the Metabones is slightly faster in the sense that when you take a photograph is how quickly the autofocus can find something. Now, I'm just going to do this. Uh, I'll, zoom, I'll uh, take the focus out to infinity and I will focus on you guys now. And then when you hear the camera click, is when it's found its focus. So, are we ready? Let's... There you go. So, it's about three seconds. It's about three seconds. Now. now, really quickly, as a compare and contrast, let's just take that off and pop on the e-mount, like that, and then let's take a photograph of you guys. Are you ready? Done. Yeah? So, it was just a slow shutter, but the beep is the point where it found its focus. It's so much twice quicker. Fast. Yeah. Twice as fast. Yeah, three least. times faster. And that will do that with all Sony e yeah. lenses. Yeah, ridiculously fast. Um, uh, with the kit lens as well, you get the power zoom, uh, which is a, a little slider on the side here, which means you can zoom in and out nice and slowly if you're doing video work. Now, one thing that we haven't mentioned uh, that you will probably like to know is that this review and our... Badge 200 well. was also done on the Alpha. Yeah. We filmed it and we're currently filming right now on the Sony Alpha 6000 just to show you the quality of the imagery. The introduction uh, where we were up in uh, the woods that was also on the Sony Alpha 6000. So it's a brilliant, brilliant camera. We will sing the praises of the Sony Alpha 6000 so much because it works for what we want. It might, it's not for everybody, you know, there's a lot of people out there that find it too light. Not, not comfortable in their hand or a bit too, uh, it's a bit too fiddly in the menu system, things like that. Once you get your hand, once you, your hand, once you get your head around it, it's brilliant. All of the buttons are manual, there's no menu system that you have to go into too much while you're changing the settings. You can change the aperture, the ISO and the shutter speed just by moving dials actual physical dials, which makes a huge difference. Huge difference. Um, I'm used to moving physical dials and getting the shot as quickly as possible during wedding photography, so to find a little mini camera like this that gets almost as equally good quality shots, especially with different lenses on, and the usability of being able to change the settings so quickly is just it's ridiculously amazing, and I love that for the fact. So I think that covers a lot of the important parts. It takes an SD card, a uh, standard SD card. Um, the faster the SD card, the quicker you can take photographs and it will not fill the buffer in the camera. All cameras have buffers. You can maybe take 30 shots on one and then it'll stop because it has to record them into the memory and then once it's done then you can carry on. So that's when you're doing fast burst, that sort of thing. Um, that was a yeah. like that as well. That's, yeah. that's another sound effect well, I'm going to use again. Um, so the faster your card, so I don't know, 10 megabytes a second, 20 megabytes a second, the, the, the quicker that you can get the um, images into your camera without it buffering and, and stopping. One other thing to mention as well, which is something that I found out the other day, actually, and um, it's quite amusing. This is, uh, again, Canon Fit Flash. It hasn't got any batteries in it at the moment, but it fits on. 
and it works, it actually triggers the flash. So you can go stupendously ridiculous with this camera. Um, you can put on your flash and you can put on another Canon lens or you can use the kit lens and you can get some really nice indoor shots as well. You know, I've done a couple of, of uh, my daughter with this flash and, you know, to, to my wife's dismay, I've been photographing her and she, she just gets annoyed with me. Um, and, and you can get some really nice shots. It is, it, you know? It's a stupendously good camera, but we're trying, we, we have to try and stay focused on, on why we're doing this review. This is purely reviewing for the landscape photography, wild camping side of things. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching this video for a review of the Alpha 6000, thank you, it's great. We're reviewing it as best we can. Mm -hmm. I have no experience, virtually zero experience with using this camera in any other environment than wild camping. Now that also includes midnight, tripod, star photography, mm -hmm. very high ISO. So we thought we'd finish the review by literally just having a conversation to try and uh, brainstorm about all, all of its good, bad points, rather than just trying to bring up a script sheet and say, okay, well, what's its spec and it does that. And you always remember something. So we thought we'd finish by um, literally just talking about how we use it yeah. and what it actually does, and, and more importantly, uh, what's going to be relevant to the guy that's now, or the, the, the guy or girl that's now going to be watching this thinking, you know what, I'm going to go and buy an Alpha 6000 because of what these guys have said. And um, the technical side of things alone, it's brilliant. I can't say any more about it. It's, it's ISO handling. <laughs> it's, it's, it's sublime. I don't know how they've done it. It's, it's ISO noise handling is, is unreal. Up to 3200, it, it's virtually... I've got, a, I've got a D7100. I mean, the body alone was a thousand pound. Body alone. This can almost spank it up to 1600 ISO. For nice, for a, what, what was 600 is now Probably 500, 500, quid, yeah. 500 pound body, half the size, half of everything, is the price being the most important, it, is, it handles noise superbly. Colin's already mentioned, I think, the fact that everything's more compact, I find my function keys quicker, I find my ISO, my shutter, little changes much quicker than I do on a DSLR, because you can see. Yeah, your thumb has to move around a lot. Everything is within an inch on this particular camera. On all of these mirrorless cameras, everything is more compact. But therein lies perhaps another problem. Now, I mean, I'm just a normal bloke. I have normal sort of size hands. If you're a bigger set gent or girl that maybe has stockier fingers, might prefer having more distance between the controls or these not so tiny little buttons, the distance between you control so you don't catch them. Personal preference. I think it's brilliant when I've got the camera up to my eye, I can immediately find the two there and there. Important bits that I need to use to change things on the fly quickly. It works for me personally better. Alright, so sorry if that just cuts out and then randomly cuts in again. We've just found another of the disadvantages of the Sony Alpha 6000. It does 20 minutes of video mm -hmm. and then, then shuts it just itself cuts. off. Yeah. <laughs> Annoying! Well annoying. But we were on, we're talking about how unbelievably advantageous the live view uh, viewfinder is for uh, photographing in real time. It's one of its biggest plus points and I can't believe it took us this long in a review to mention it actually because it is a massive, massive deal. It means you can change your settings, aperture, shutter speed, ISO and um, exposure. Yeah. In real time, and the view that you see through your viewfinder, your digital viewfinder, is exactly what the sensor is now going to take. You will see the photograph you're going to make, which which is something that a mirrored camera can never do. It doesn't matter if you've got a £10,000 body, it sees via the mirror what's coming in there. You change your settings based on your ability, but simple as that. You have to take the photograph and then start playing with things and you could take maybe 20 shots before you've actually got everything set up for the right shot. With these, and that's not just unique to the Alpha 6000, with all the mirrorless systems, because of its live capability, you see in your viewfinder exactly what the shot you're going to take is. And, and, and that's a massive deal, certainly if you take it at Collins level, where you remove half of your shots, and you remove probably half of your time in editing later, because you make a, a brilliant photo fantastic rather than a good photo great. 
uh, it's taken in camera. You've got your settings in camera and you can change them on the fly in seconds and see immediately and that is a humongous bonus in, in low light, dusk, going for that shot, click, 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 nope, click, bang, done. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got the shot, it's there. Brilliant, brilliant feature of the mirrorless camera. Do you use the uh, the App Store? No. No, no. 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 I did download a couple of things on the App Store, they don't work. No, it's got so. near field communications which you can tap if you've got an NFC um, chip in your phone. I've got the, the Sony. Uh, Z3 phone. Did that work for you? Yeah, but I did have the Sony Z3 phone, but then I broke it. Um, but anyway, that's another story. Um, and, and tapping it on the side did, once you've downloaded the app, the Sony app from uh, Google Play, um, it instantly recognises it and you can do, um, you can see what's on the screen via your phone and the settings and things like that. And you can take photographs and set recordings and things like that, which has its uses. But as a landscape photographer out on the fells, to have your phone tapping it against it and doing there's you know there's no reason for that um it might come in handy for other things um but for, it hasn't featured in anything that i've ever done and i and still think that's do. unique to a sony phone i yeah. don't think it does it it would do it i just don't think as well i haven't tried um, it but i've, I've had yeah. nothing but problems nothing yeah. but problems with the with the app side of things the wi-fi side of things and, and another tip as well to conserve your battery life is put the camera into airplane mode. Uh, it's a quick, simple um, menu settings thing. Because when you switch your camera off, um, the Wi-Fi connectivity, so then you've got your phone, you can switch the camera back on again. So the camera is constantly, it's very low power usage, but it's constantly on even though it's switched off because you can switch it on remotely. Um, so if you've got it in your bag and the airplane mode's not on and you go on holiday, you put the camera away, it's in your sack, it's ready, you get up the next morning, you go, oh look, the sun's out, it's a brilliant view from our balcony, and you take a photo, oh no, the battery's gone because I didn't turn airplane mode off. So always switch that off. More so for the fact if you're on the fells, you're going to walk for five hours, mm -hmm. if not more, and then <laughs> you ain't charging it up. You ain't charging it up out in the fells with no plug sockets, um, apart from the 10 billion milliamps of power that we take with us, um, which is mainly for the phones and the GPS. And for safety reasons, we need those lines of communication. Um, it, just make sure you switch it off. Just make sure you switch it off because it's. Which I only found out about last week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He told me. So, yeah. yeah, I was wondering why I was charging my battery to 100%, and then a week later it was on 40. Mm -hmm. DSLRs don't do that. Yeah. yeah. They stay as they are. I was like, why? Why? Is my battery knackered? Yeah. And if you're not going to use it for a length of time, like with any electri electronic device, take the battery out, you know, because it still uses a very, very tiny amount of power, and it, it, just, it just reduces the life of the battery. Take the battery yeah. out. Yes, it will decharge, but a lot slower than if it was inside the camera. Um, that's not unique to, any, to the R6000. That's just any digital... Uh, device that you have. Um, so, um, so why do you yeah. take it? What what made you buy it in the first place? I'd read reviews. I I read reviews, and I was already getting frustrated with the size of DSLRs. I was uh, I was getting more and more into photography, and I have a I have a little daughter as well. Like Colin did it at the time, she was three four, and there was a lot of things she was going to and everything like that where I wanted to take shots. But I have nice lenses. I have these lenses as well, and. Um, <laughs> You can see, you go to a little kiddie's party, you can't be taking <laughs> lenses like this. Yeah. I needed, I needed a, another solution and I did a lot of reviews and, and at the time mirrorless were just starting to take off and this had just come out and uh, it got storming reviews from the pros on all fronts and uh, I bought it for that reason but uh, it's coming to its element, it's coming to its element. Yeah, definitely. With, definitely. with, with the camping side of things, with its, its, its size and everything like that, it, it, it's such a massive advantage. And I'm not of that level where I can genuinely say my DSLR is better. That I haven't found anything yet apart from lens variations mm -hmm. where my, my DSLR that cost me twice as much money can beat it apart from maybe at extreme ISOs. Mm -hmm. and, 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 okay. and that's it. The, I think the main important thing is that the reason I use this at weddings and, and, and I'm... I'm I can 100% guarantee now, if I were listening to this review, I'd be thinking, well, why? Why Why do people still use big DSLRs? Now, right, there's there's two reasons. Oh, there's a multitude of reasons, but two quite important reasons. The first reason is reliability. 
the bride only walks down the aisle once. I need to know that this is going to take the photographs. On the Sony Alpha, yeah, yeah there's a, a moment of uncertainty. If you're on a fell and you're taking a photograph and it doesn't work that first time, it's fine. You know, just wait five minutes, let it load back up again and take the photograph. You're, you're absolutely fine. Um, and the other, um, well, in fact, there's another two. Um, the, the very small things that I notice as a professional photographer, and that's low light focusing. Now, Steve did um, actually, it blew me away a little bit at, at one point when I took the DSLR and Steve took the Alpha 6000 and he was focusing on things that seemingly weren't there. Uh, but then when it came to editing, we realised they were still a little bit soft because it not actually pinpointed on the thing we wanted to focus on. Uh, whereas a DSLR won't focus and won't tell you it's focused until it genuinely is focused on something. And that only comes with spending a lot of money on bodies and lenses, you know, the speed of the focus. The Alpha 6000 is probably, it could probably focus faster than the majority Most of the DSLRs. DSLRs that, yeah. And it's certainly faster than this, is a 5D Mark II. Um, and, and it focuses faster than that, great for sports. But then you've got your 1DXs and things like that, which are perfect for sports. You see the guys around the side of football pitches, which go, you know, that won't do this. Uh, I don't need to because, you know, taking pictures of relatively slow moving things. But its burst is impressive. But it's bur yeah, the burst, burst is ridiculous. Is incredibly yeah, 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 impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, so, I mean, we've spoken about it. We were going to do like a, a discussion, a general chat about all of its things and everything like that. But I think what we'll do, because mm. we'll show you after we've finished this, we'll give you some close ups of the menu system yeah. quickly, you can make your mind up for them yourself. But we'll finish it literally with what are the pros, what are the cons versus a DSLR. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good way to round up a review of this particular camera and try and harmonize that with the general consensus over what a mirrorless camera is. This is unique to the Alpha 6000 of course, but a lot of things we've said are gonna be the same with all of them. Oh, the panorama. The panorama setting, it, you twist the button, take it to panoramic, you can choose whether you want to take it in portrait or landscape, and it stitches it absolutely seamlessly. It's, 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 Other cameras do it, don't get me wrong, but this is brilliant. It's just like... It's incredible. Ooh, that looks really nice. I don't know it's how done. it does it. I don't know how it does yeah, it. Yeah, but yeah. it does it, and it does it in seconds. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant. It's bonkers. Absolutely It's almost bonkers. made for landscape photography. Yeah, yeah. And it works in that, and you can choose landscape or... Portrait, yeah, and you can tell miles. it I want to go up, down, left, or right. Yeah, you can yeah, choose yeah. which yeah. way your panorama, uh, panor panorama goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant feature. Brilliant. So pros, Cole. Pros. Pros. Pros, pros. of the Alpha 6000. Lightweight. Lightweight. Relatively cheap compared to DSLRs and other Price mirrorless good. cameras. Yeah, uh, Price absolutely is amazing. Um, it's portability. Um, it's ease of use to a degree when it yeah. comes to functionality and being able to grab it easily and change settings yeah. quickly. Uh, live, live view. Finder. Live view, yeah. Not yeah. for everybody, but I've done that idea. Yeah. Live viewfinder is the way forward. I, I predict Flipping out his screen. Five years from now, the DSLR will be on the decline. Mirrorless will be on on the up. Yeah. That's my prediction. I think they're that good. Yeah. Flip your screen, yeah. Great. Yeah, it's great. It could be it's better nice. if it, it went all the way over, but nice. It's not a deal breaker for me. Photographs in RAW. Yes. And RAW and JPEG. ISO noise handling. Superb. Yes. Yeah. Focus speed. Superb. <laughs> yeah. Until you get to low light. Yeah. Or if you're using a com light adapter with a, yeah. a, a, a separate lens, a different manufactured lens. But a pro in itself. Yeah. You're not necessarily knackered if you have twenty thousand pounds of the Canon lenses. I don't know if they do a Nikon one. I don't because I have yeah, looks. Yes, they do. I suspect yes. they probably yeah, do. Yeah. yeah. You can find a way of using your lenses. Another pro. Um, so that means you don't have to go out and buy a bunch of new lenses if you're doing landscape stuff. If you wanted to use this for more speed focusing and things like that, then yeah, don't don't use the adapters. Buy the specific Sony lenses. Yeah. That, like Steve uh, touched on earlier, there's some absolutely bonkers lenses out there. The Carl Zeiss stuff yeah, really and Sigma good. started making some really lenses good lenses as well. Um, so really yeah. good lenses, and it's only going to get better. Yeah, the manufacturers is. are hopping on this now, yeah. big time. Yeah. So you you are only going to get better and better lenses. You can get all those second hand lenses as well. Yeah. Uh, the little 50mm lens that you've got, I think MPP Photographic are now selling it for about £150. Which I think you bought it for what's three, four hundred pounds? Three, four hundred pounds. Yeah. 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 So second hand as well. You can buy the six thousand because the six thousand three hundred's out, 
it brings down the second hand mark, market price of the 6,000. So a lot of people like me and Steve will just be like, well, now the new one's out, I want the new one. So I just want to sell the other one just yeah. to get rid of it. You know, it's brilliant, it's been great, but now I want this new one. So there'll be so many now there, out there on the market now on eBay, uh, or if you want to buy somewhere reputable, MPB Photographic is, uh, or Wex Photographic, two very, very reputable companies that sell. Yeah. Pay a little bit more, obviously, because it's a company, but you know, you know you're going to get your equipment. Cons. Cons. <coughs> uh, 20 minute filming. 20 minute filming, yeah. Yeah, 20 minute No filming. warning, no warning, no red light. No. No indication that you are filming video. Yeah. But it's a camera. Another argument, do you buy a camera to do a video? I don't think you do, but it, it does it. The eyepiece falls off quite easily. So this, this is slightly different, but there's, the eyepiece is this that attaches yeah. to the back. And, uh, and Steve's he just misplaced his because it just dropped off. It's just dropped off on the yeah. car journey yeah. here. Yeah. Gone. Don't know where it's gone. So, so that falls off very easily. Yeah. Chromatic and aberration on the kit lens and the lens vignetting on the kit lens. Um, not the same for the other more expensive yeah. lenses. On the kit lens. Uh, Start-up times. Mm. Oh. Start Sluggish. Up times. Sluggish. There's a there's a glitch. There's yeah. something wrong. Sony, sort this out because I've had it for two years now, and yeah. college just bought a new one, so it's a new version, updated software. There's something wrong yeah. with the firmware. You sometimes you'll turn this thing on and it will sit there for ten seconds thinking. Then it will come out and you'll turn it off. Nothing will happen. It will then go back and take a shot, which it doesn't take. It just yeah. seems to release Make the mechanism, the yeah. and then it'll go awful. Yeah. Oh, that needs fixing. And I don't think that's a big problem to. None solve. of these cons are deal breakers for me. Which it's just, is it's just, it's just polish that Sony could fix. Yeah. Now, whether or not they've just decided to sod the R for 6,000 now because they've got the 6,300, yeah, yeah, yeah. which I suspect they have. Yeah. But if you want that shot, sometimes you want to turn it on. This, I can just go on and it's there. Shot. Yeah. A lot of the time, we can't do that with the Alpha 6000. It just goes, I don't know, I'm having a fart this morning. <laughs> yeah. It's why you see sometimes on the Felder, we're just looking bemused down at his camera. Oh yeah, it's on now. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, it can be annoying. So that's 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 bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the focus, like we said, in low light, a lot of the time it will it will bang beep focused. It's not really. It's not focused. Anything. Yeah. It, it, it's not. Um, I'm struggling with the cons. It, there's there's not a lot more. I mean, there's not a lot more to it. Put it this way: the pros way outdo the cons. Yeah, totally yeah. obliterate the cons. Yeah. Uh, way outdo the cons. And if it's a camera that you're looking for, amazing quality imagery, which it is, um, ease of use to a degree for a certain level of photographer, uh, from keen amateur right through to pro, um, it speaks in volumes in the sense that Steve's a keen I'm amateur check it again. and I'm a pro. He's just going to check, check it, it again because now I'm worried about the 20 minute cutoff that we now know about. Yeah. 15, we've got four minutes. Four minutes. Four, four minutes. minutes. So the fact that we had to get up and check that um, obviously is featured in the in the con side of things. It's got a, a mount on the bottom of it to attach to a tripod uh, or your walking pole. Yeah, uh, external like flash mount. External flash mount, um, so you can pop on Canon flashes, Nikon flashes, and obviously the Sony flash. Uh, there's a built-in onboard flash yeah. that pops up. Uh, the flashes directly, or you can just pull it back a little bit and you can get the bounce flash. It's flash. only single SD card. Yes. But that size, you, yeah. you have to compromise somewhere. It only yeah. carries one SD card and it goes in a stupid way. It's in the battery compartment. No one knows really why it goes physical. in that way around. It goes in a completely Ill illogical way around, yeah. but it works. So you can't do raw JPEG double card. Yeah. So if you're taking some really important shots... Don't use it. <laughs> you can't back them up. You can't back. First, I think, is monumentally impressive, yeah. even in raw. I mean, it whoops my 7100 yeah. on, on raw burst. I think this thing... I think we'll show this yeah. back later, yeah. but I think it does a 12 second, 12 per second burst, and it will do that for about five seconds. So you're looking at maybe 60 before it starts to run out of memory. I don't, and that's raw, and these are 20 to 30 megabyte yeah, files. Yeah, yeah. Incredible. Just Incredible. one thing I've just literally just picked up this spec sheet that we got from Sony, and it's the autofocus points. There's 179 autofocus points. This has got nine. <laughs> nine. 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 Mine has 52, and that was biblical when yes. I bought them. Yeah, yeah, biblical. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to find now on here the... Uh, burst. 
The burst rate, yeah. Oh, 11 frames a second. Oh, I was yeah, close. Okay. I, I thought 12. Two and a half frames a second, six well, there you frames. Go. 11 yeah. frames a second burst. I mean, that's... It, it, it yeah. annihilates everything I've got. Yeah. It, it's, it's so, so, so good. So, I, uh, yeah, there you go. I think couple this, buy the Alpha 6000 and couple it with, a, with one, certainly for landscape, with one really good, and Zeiss do one. Yeah, they do, yeah. A really good landscape lens. Mm -hmm. You don't need anything else. 3D SLR in a bin. Yeah. yeah. That, that, is, well, no, that, is, that is our Give review of the Alpha 6000. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's done. It's, it's a game changer, it's new technology, this is the future guys. Yep. Hope this was useful for you. We'll show you now uh, the back of it, some basic menu stuff. We won't go into that too much because you'll, you'll be able to figure it out for yourself. But yep. that's, that is the Alpha 6000, that is mirrorless cameras. If you've got any questions, please ask them in the comments box below. We will respond, we tend to respond. We always respond. Everybody. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> it's been a pleasure guys, hope it was good. Take care. We'll see, see you on, on the bells. Yeah. So here uh, we'll just show you the very basic features. So there's power on. Uh, menu, top right. Basic screen that you'll get presented with. This is all fairly simple. This is quite nicely laid out to be fair. Camera settings. This is where I think it doesn't necessarily become the, uh, the most user friendly camera. I mean you can see just on those there are seven different settings just for the camera settings then you go across the settings there's six there Wi-Fi, two for applications there are a lot of settings mm -hmm. to play around I'm certainly not going to take you through all of those main ones aspect ratio and quality raw very nice video format is mp4 by the way most commonly used very very nice um, you can't. I can't show you the viewfinder because it it, it registers when your eye goes up against yeah. it. It's quite nice. So see, it goes away. see how it goes away, and then you can yeah. sort of see it flash there. That's it goes automatically to your viewfinder. That's nice. Um, but everything is, is is usable from here. You can customize these uh, function keys. You've got a function there and and customizable two, and there is a customizable one on the top there. You can customize those to to how you want to use it. It's an advanced feature. We use them, I accept, we, we use them, it's really, really useful for, for rapidly switching between, say, the sun out, the sun in, really, really nice. Um, and these, your, your function button on the top, between all your different modes, this is fairly standard across all DSLR ranges now, the, the AZ Aperture, Shutter, Programmable, ma uh, Manual, uh, a couple you've got here are um, obviously video, panoramic, and uh, scene. Yeah. They, they will allow you to choose from the various different scenes and uh, intelligent and intelligent auto plus uh, superior auto why you need auto and superior auto I, I don't know it, it's sort of gimmick that sells cameras I suppose I would just make auto is auto I, it's like, I don't know I don't need superior auto I'll just stick with auto uh, right okay whatever but yeah flash pop up flash movable useful uh, you can customize your display and all of this that you're now seeing on the back of the screen is reproduced exactly in the viewfinder as well. Very nice feature. Uh, and the timing functions, they're all on there. Your ISO settings, I haven't, I haven't got it. It's on all, obviously an aperture you'd get. Uh, ISO, usability and everything like that. I have them all customised on my, on my hotkeys, but you can go into that yourselves on, on the back of the camera. But it's all there to find. It's not necessarily the most brilliantly laid out. But certainly, I think enough. Cole, do you agree? I totally agree, yeah. It, it's all there. It's all there. Is it going to epi? No, of course it won't. You're on camera, so it won't do it. <laughs> Tripod socket. Dual ports for uh, charging and video out. It doesn't have HDMI, by the way. Wi-Fi logo for the Wi-Fi that you'll never use. <laughs> video recording hot button. Record. Battery port here. Clips out so that's nice and easy. SD card goes in here. This is a nightmare, by the way, to get out. You need nails. It's not brilliantly done. Uh, as you can see, it's just popped out. So if I just put my battery back in now and I want to change my SD card, okay, what, where are we going to go? What where are we going to go? Yeah, there's logic. There's logic. No, it doesn't go that. It goes backwards. It goes in backwards. And it clips in, closes. Not a sealed door. No, uh, no grommet. 
no rubber grommet, so it's not weatherproofed. Worth noting for the fells, keep it dry. Uh, I think that basically pretty much covers it. But, oh, this is a viewfinder um, focus. That's nice, that's nice to have for, for people who don't have perfect vision with their eyes. You, you can change the focusing of the viewfinder to a dot for your eye. DSLRs have it as well, but it's nice on a live view. Um, See, so there's my hand, there's the size of the camera. That's the kit lens, obviously, take the lens off. That's how small it is. You can show the sensor as well. Yeah, sensor size, you can see the sensor straight there. There's your non mirrorless, of course, there's no mirror there. And all those little dots down there are just the contact points for the information that's yeah. sent from the lens to the camera. So, and they're just bolt on too. See the, the copper contact points there, that's how it works. They're all the same. This is a this is called a solid Alpha E mount. Buy yeah. lens, be careful, make sure you get the right one. White dot's the white dot and it will uh It's really hard to do through a camera, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's not the easiest to do in the world. But that's it, it's 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 very clean, it's clean on the back, it works, it's functional, could be better of course, could be worse. Maybe in a few months time, don't tell my wife. <laughs> Probably have the Alpha Six T300, which is a new version of this, and uh, we'll see what the differences are there. But um, that is the Alpha 6000, guys.